next item in the setup menu is record in setup. HD standard allows you to select the format you'd like to record your video in. HDV will give you video that is shot in the 1080i specification at an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. HDV PF24 gives you the same specification and aspect ratio as HDV, but it records video in 24 frames per second, which is the standard rate that film is recorded in. For added effect, we've now activated the Cine Mode feature under the camera's recording programs. This setting can help to give your HDV footage the appearance of being shot on film. This is a stylistic choice and it's up to you as the director to decide if you want your look to be film-like or video-like. DV Wide sets your camera to record in standard DV mode, which is 480i, but it will keep the aspect ratio at 16 by 9 as it was in HDV. DV Normal records video at 480i, but it changes the aspect ratio to 4x3, which would fit a standard television screen. I'm going to recommend here that you never, ever record two different formats on one tape. Pick one format and stick with it for the entire tape. It'll avoid a lot of headaches when you go to edit your projects later on. When you've selected one of the DV record modes from HD Standard, two more items appear on the menu. DV recording mode allows you to set your camera to record in either SP or standard play mode or LP or long play mode. LP mode increases the recording time on the tape to 1.5 times that of SP. However, SP mode gives you a higher quality image because it actually uses more of the tape to record your image information. I'm going to recommend that you stay away from LP mode. LP mode may give you much longer tape to record, but the quality of the image you're recording will not be as good as it would be in standard play or SP mode. That's why it's always best to carry several additional mini DV tapes when you're on a shoot. And if you're worried that you'll forget the order of the events, pre-label each tape before you go out into the field. I like to keep a small notebook in my camera bag and a pen so I can jot down short notes about where I was or what I was intending when I shot each tape. DV Audio refers to the format the sound will be recorded in. 12-bit records audio in 12-bit mode. This gives you four audio channels recorded at 32 kHz, which is useful if you intend to add an audio track in camera or perhaps dub additional audio later on. 16-bit records audio in 16-bit mode, which gives you two audio channels recorded at 48 kilohertz. Windscreen automatically reduces background noises that your built-in microphone will typically pick up when you're shooting outdoors. Note that the windscreen cannot be turned off when the mode switch is set to auto. The microphone attenuator is a useful feature if you find that the audio you're recording is too high, but you can't control it. For example, this waterfall is quite loud. Notice how the mic levels are peaking frequently. Now, with the microphone attenuator turned on, the levels are much more reasonable. The attenuator basically reduces the intensity of the sound your microphone hears so that it can reproduce it at a more agreeable level. File number refers to the system that your camera uses to save still image files to the mini SD card. As you shoot still images, files are assigned numbers from 0101 to 9900. Up to 100 files can be stored in folders that are numbered 101 to 998. When reset is selected, each time you place a new mini SD card in the camera, the first picture and first folder on the card will reset to 101-0101. Continuous means that the camera will remember the file and folder number of the last picture that was taken. With this setting active, even if you take one mini SD card out and place in another, the next image taken will fit neatly into the series. The next item under Setup menu is Play Out Setup. AV Phones changes the functionality of the AV phone jack located on the side of the camera. When AV is selected, the jack is set up to send audio signals to an audio video device. When it's set to Phones, the jack will accept headphones and you can use them to listen to the audio. This icon will appear in the display to let you know. Now, be careful. 
don't ever plug your headphones into the AV phone jack unless you see that icon on your screen. If you plug headphones into the jack while AV is selected, you might damage your headphones and you will certainly hear sounds that you don't want to hear. When AV phones is set to phones, the next item in the menu, phones volume, will become active. Here, you can use the joystick to change the audio levels that come from the headphone jack. We recommend always keeping this setting at the same level. If you constantly change this, you'll never know if the audio levels you hear through the headphones accurately represent the amount of sound that is actually being recorded to tape. We recommend leaving these levels alone. That way, if you notice that an important sound is too low, you can be sure it's because the microphone levels are too low and not just the headphones. Component Out allows you to select the type of connection you need when connecting your camera to an external monitor using the video component cable that came with your camera. Use 480i when you want to connect to a standard definition monitor that has an aspect ratio of 4x3. Use 1080i when you want to connect to a high definition monitor that has an aspect ratio of 16x9. If you connect your camera to a standard definition monitor while the 1080i setting is selected, the camera will automatically switch the setting to 480i for you. For more information on these settings, we recommend you take a look at the camera's user's manual. The next item in the setup menu is display setup. Brightness allows you to change the brightness level of the LCD screen by pulling the joystick left or right. While there may be times when you want to change this setting, we recommend that you keep brightness set to the factory set position. As with the phone's volume setting, if you change the brightness of your LCD screen, you won't see an accurate representation of the scene in your monitor. If you do feel the need to calibrate your display, be sure to keep an eye on this bar. If the display is too bright, the white portion will disappear, and if it's too dark, the black portion will vanish. If you keep the entire bar in sight, you can be pretty sure that the display isn't too far out of whack. Still, we recommend leaving the brightness level in the center. Markers refers to a guide that can be superimposed on your display image to help you frame your shot. Level gives you a horizontal line across the center of your image, which divides your scene into two parts. This is useful when you want to align a horizon or flat surface in your shot. You can see it in either white or gray. Grid gives you a tic-tac-toe pattern which divides your frame into nine parts. This feature is helpful when you're trying to line up a horizon or a tall building. This marker can also be seen in either white or gray. Assist function gives you additional guides that'll help you determine the proper exposure and focusing of your scene. Zebra allows you to see portions of your image that are too bright. This can help you determine if you need to adjust your image in some way to ensure that your footage is properly lit. The value used refers to the overall brilliance of the signal, which is one component of the overall image. Zebra 70% shows you a pattern over areas that are over 70% of the brilliance signal. Zebra 100% will show you any areas of your scene that are over 100% of the brilliant signal.